I must say, I got a pretty sweet lineup here. Look at that. I got Low and Slow, we got Mr. Stubbs, and we got Kenny. Yep. I, uh, <laughs> I was just taking a look at where my fuel leak was. And let me show you guys why you want to make sure you clean out around your fuel tanks all the time. And it doesn't matter how old your truck is. You could have a new truck and if you never wash it, this could happen to you. So if I grab my flashlight and we take a look, here is my hole right there. Now there was some dirt. Um, these lines that are up here, they were down there and uh, there was a rock or I don't know, dirt. And you can see the corrosion and there's actually a hole. So I'm not sure if that's a corrosion hole or if it's a rock that just sat there and rubbed, but um, it happened to me once before um, on which truck? I can't remember if it was my old C500 or if it was my, my, um, my other self loader, but uh, but yeah, I had dirt stuck down there. Actually, on my other truck, it was a it was a rock and it just sat there and rubbed a hole and then I filled up with fuel and it started dripping. And very much like this one the other day, fuel just started running out. That was, that was a pretty significant hole. So, but there again, it was sitting for, I don't know, six years, nine years, something like that, 10 years, I don't know. But, um, but yeah, so I'm gonna use that JB Weld, patch that hole, and that's the beauty of it. You don't need, you don't need to weld it up. Although, well, actually welding it up would probably be more difficult. So, and where it is, you can't see it. These tanks are not great. Let's just, I think we can agree on that. They're not great. They're not pretty. I mean, no, they're not pretty. I mean, who would put an information plaque right in the middle of your tank? Like it's an aftermarket tank and it's ugly. Well, that's ugly. I mean, other than that, it's, it's a round tank and it's perfectly fine. But uh, anyways, I'm going to get some JB Weld and squish it up and patch it up. I just got to, I just got to find it now. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Shop's a mess. I really should spend some time cleaning up the shop. That's what I should do. Alrighty. I got my JB Weld. I um, totally read all the directions. No, I didn't. I, uh, all I know <laughs> is I got to need it. <laughs> You've got to need it. And need as in. You know, kind of like a cat does. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, we're gonna squish this into a putty and then stick it to my thingamajigger. And when I say my thingamajigger, I mean my fuel tank, not my thingamajigger, if you know what I mean. Although I mean it. <laughs> you know, and this is the problem when I start to talk and think. I just had a, I just had a thought because of my thought. And you guys probably are questioning my dry, quirky, quirky sense of humor. But um, when a guy talks about, you know, putting it on your thingamajigger, you could make a mold with this. Like you think about it. <laughs> Just think about it. Okay, we make it into a putty. You wrap it around something you want to make a mold of. Like say you want to make a mold of this screwdriver. You could wrap it around so you make a complete mold and then it's gonna dry and harden. And then you can pull your mold out of it, and then you gotta, <laughs> you've got a mold. <sighs> what the heck am I, I don't recommend using JB Weld to make a mold, let's just say that, because there's chemicals in it and it could burn. The tool that you're, you know, trying to make, or could be this. Anyways, quit talking, Mike. You're digging yourself a hole. You should get a shovel. No, instead I'm going to need it. <laughs> need my JB Weld so that I can patch la tank. La fuel tank. This is kind of the boring part. I'll skip and get to the good part. All righty. Now I'm going to try and squish it kind of into the hole a bit uh, and around the hole, around the hole, around the, oh God, shut up, Mike. Um, yeah, so I mixed it all up. It's actually started to get a little bit warm. The color's all the same, so I'm uh, squishing it on here. And we're just going to work it in so that it, uh, 
grabs a hold, which is why I also um, use the wire wheel to clean it up first. Not too shabby. Not too shabby, Peter Bill Mike. You're doing a fine job if I do say so for myself. There we go. It's looking good. I like that. Yep. Good solid patch. Wean it out to a skinnier surface or whatever you want to call it. And there. I'm going to call that good. And now if these lines sit back there, um, hopefully it's not going to booger it. So, so yeah, there it is. There's my patch and uh, yeah, we'll come back later and it should be hard. Now, you know, I was thinking, oh, I shouldn't touch my eye. Thinking about my alternator. Well, actually I was talking to my brother, Steve about it. And like he said, he's like, you know what? Maybe I wreck the alternator by having it charging to ground. Cause of course the alternator is going to spin and try and charge, isn't it? Or does it, is it going to require 12 volts in order for it to energize and start charging? That's, that's what I don't know. So, cause like he said, if it's spinning and it's trying to charge and you've got it ground to where it's a dead short, maybe I buggered it. I don't know. And it's an old alternator. I mean, let's face it. It's probably, probably 20 some years old. So, whoo. So anyways, um, yeah, I'm going to pull it outside and try starting it and let it run up to temperature just in case it starts working again. So, and if it doesn't, whatever, I got a new alternator here and I'm going to pull my fenders off and try and put the deck on. Um, don't know if I'm going to get it done tonight, but, uh, we're going to give it a whirl because you know what? It's kind of hokey. I mean, yeah, let's just say it worked, but it's hokey. I got some clamps, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to U-bolt it down here and probably up there and just throw uh, four U-bolts on that deck because honestly, I'm not going to, it's not like I'm going to be hauling anything heavy. If I do, it's, yeah, I mean, four, four light duty cab guard U-bolts, um, you can hold a, did I just blow a bunch of spit? <laughs> Anyways, for, uh, actually they're Magnum, Magnum, uh, they make Magnum bumpers and stuff. And you know, for an aluminum cab guard, it's what they use to hold an aluminum cab guard down. So that's what I'm going to use because if it's good enough to hold a cab guard with a bunch of chains and all the rest of it, it's good enough for Kenny's little deck. Keep it in line. Well, I tell you, that's much better. Airing them up and then just doop, open the door and backing them out, much better. Not nearly as smoky inside. Because let me tell you, when Kenny's cold, he's a little bit of a smoker. You know what I mean. But um, anyways, I'm gonna drag the torches out and I'm gonna get the tractor, lift that up and do some, do some hot knifing before the sun goes down. So I lifted up my little deck. <laughs> Um, and what I got to do is I got to cut this step off because the tire is going to be really close to this. So I'm going to leave a couple inches so I could step on that. And if I have to, I'll whack it off. <laughs> I'll cut it off right close. And, um, and yeah, I'm just going to zip this off with the torch there and zip it off there so I could use this as a little step because I, according to my calculations, the tire should come down right about there. Um, so yeah, we'll see if I got to take that off, I will, but, um, you know what? It's, it's not bad. It's, uh, you know, it's got a little bit of rust, surface rust. Uh, I don't see any rust holes and, um, for what we're doing, I think it's going to work good. Other than it's got a fuel filler, which we don't need and I'll have to cut this, uh, this mud flap off as well because we won't be needing that might be able to oh yeah those are small enough bolts I should be able to just 
break those off with uh, with my impact. So, but uh, I think I don't know if I'll have to cut that off or not. That might be okay. Yeah, that's probably okay. Or I could take that off once it's once it's loaded on the truck. So, anyways, let's dig out the torch.
Well, what do you think, guys? I thought this was a better option than those hokey fenders, so. Um, I gotta, it looks like I'm gonna have to raise it up, but um, it's like the right length. I left this little tab here so that I could climb up and put my foot there. We'll see. Well, actually, it should be fine. We'll see. It might, it might still be too close, but, um, and uh, I'm gonna have to raise it, raise it up, I think. Because I'm going to dump the air in the suspension and it's probably going to sit on this, so um, I'll get some 4x4s to set it on. And uh, my U-bolts will be fine with that because um, they're long. And, uh, and i got to move my, my jack. But, um, but yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? Picked this little deck up for 800 bucks. Thought it was... Uh, not a bad little deal for uh, for Kenny while he's short. And uh, yeah, we just gotta make him fit. I think it definitely looks a lot better. Then at least I could throw something on the deck. Then I'll maybe put a trim piece back here, um, put some marker lights, but um, anyways, I'm gonna go inside now and we will see you tomorrow. And we're back in the shop with Kenny. So I've got my grinder and I did a little trimming with the torches. I trimmed the back of this deck off because <clears throat> it was hanging down. So I trimmed that off and I'm going to, I think, cover this with something. Well, I, yeah, we're going to do something like that. And as well as I trim that off as well, um, take these old, uh, lights out of there. I'm going to leave that plate though. Um, but lights are for another day. Now you can see it's not sitting down on the deck and it's sitting on the tires. So I'm going to get two by fours or something like that. If I have to, I'll rip a two by eight to set it between the frame and the deck and then clamp it down. And the frame is dumped. The frame is dumped. The air is dumped out of the suspension right now. So, um, so that's going to be the lowest it can go. So I just want to make sure when the air's right out, it's just above the tires. <sighs> so that's what we're doing. Um, the piece I left here, I was trying to keep it so I could make it a step, but there's just not enough room. Um, and it's sitting, the bracket for it there, sitting on the tire, but this is going to come ahead another, uh, probably another three inches or so. So once I lift it up in that, it... Um, it should be better. And then I'm gonna mount the jack, I think, to here. So, anyways, that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna go find some boards to uh, to lift this sucker up. But, um, oh, and I'm gonna clean up, clean up my torch because you know what? The torch just isn't as good as, say, a plasma cutter. And I don't have a plasma cutter, so. <sighs> Not yet, anyways. But Christmas is coming. Christmas is coming.
Could have used a bigger crescent wrench for this, but. I use two hammers, like this hammer, and this hammer. Oh, three eighths. Gosh, I'm good. Yeah, modesty. Look at that. I'm gonna snip that off. I don't think I want to save that. these ones off and they're a different size what about this side yep different size I mean why make them all the same size that would be too easy right oh I shouldn't have stood up so fast <laughs> so I'm gonna say those ones are five sixteenths and I am correct. See, the other reason for taking these lights off is then I don't have lights that aren't working. Because it's better to have no lights than lights that are not working. Guy's got to get a two by four to stick underneath <clears throat> the deck. I got one, found one, but I need another one. I had another one up by the house and uh, I cut it up. I cut it up to put up a cat gate. Well, actually it was a dog gate. Well, I guess it's a dog slash cat gate for the wife. So we'll call it a dog gate because the cat could probably go over it. So we got to go over there. Yeah. <laughs> We're going over to my my pole barn where the donkeys used to be because that's where my scrap wood is. Oh, and if you guys would like, I had to put a hat on. And when I say hat, I mean a toque. If you're Canadian, it's a toque. If you're American, it's probably called a beanie. If you're from the UK, it's probably called a hat. I don't know, toque, beanie, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, I'm selling them, peterbiltmike.com. Actually, it's shop peterbiltmike.com. So we're going slow. Release the key tags. Then we're going to release some beanies, toques, because it's winter. My ears get cold because we've got a bit of a breeze. And it's minus 10 ish Celsius. So I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Look at that. There's critters here. Critters in the snow. So yeah, if you would like your very own Peterbilt toque, AKA beanie, um, shop peterbiltmike.com. Just go beep, boop, beep. <laughs> shop peterbiltmike.com and, um, and there's beanies. And I'm designing a t-shirt for you guys too. And that's gonna be cool. It's gonna be custom Peterbilt Mike. Custom, there is only one king. There's a hint. Um, yeah, so here's my, oh, my scrap wood pile. Now, uh, I need a two by four. I'm not seeing that. I got two by fours nailed together. I got some junky boards. I got some junky boards there. Is that a two by four? It kind of looks, no, those are shorter. 
Because the kicker is, I need it to be eight feet long. Need an eight feet long 4B2. And of course the 4B2 is actually like three and a half by one and a half. What's this one? Oh, geez. <laughs> Thought there was a critter. <clears throat> nope. It's just a leaf. Ah. Oh. Hmm. This is not looking good, Mike. Not looking good at all. Whoop. I mean, I could probably raise it up four inches and use these. But, uh, I don't know that I need to do that. I don't really want to have it too tall, do I? I mean, if a person had to wear chains. <sighs> That's going to be hard to, you know, lift. Well, I mean, not too bad for a guy like me. I should use a double. And then I would have... I have a good bit of clearance then. Hmm. We'll investigate some more. All right, change of plan. <sighs> I don't like the boards that are down there, so I think I'm going to rip a two by eight and a half. And as I walk back up to the shop, I look at my tracks and I think, man, I walk like bow legged or crooked or something. But, oh, there's some more critter tracks. It's probably a mouse. See? Oh, there he goes. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, yeah. Ah. Critters. Got him. Ooh, she's getting nippy. She's getting real nippy, boys. Glad I got my, my toque on. Oh, there's another critter track. Looks like that little fella is living under that rock. I think we'll just leave him alone. He's happy under that rock. Stays out of the shop. We're okay with that. Just stay out of the shop, little critters. Because I got glue traps. People say they're inhumane. But you know what's inhumane? A mouse in your car. You know it's cold when you're <laughs> when your spectacles freeze up. I can't see what I'm doing. No, that's worse. Worse. Okay, so. I got these. <sighs> well, that's a two by 10. I want that. Oh, maybe I'll rip one of those. Yeah. Oh, I got some in the car for you. Maybe I'll rip one of those. Hey guys, I have something to try out. Now, I lost my headlamp and I couldn't find it for the last couple of weeks. Looked in the truck, wasn't in the truck, looked in the other truck, wasn't in that truck. And um, anyways, Army Tech reached out to me and they're like, hey, would you like to try out our light? And I was like, sure, my headlamp's missing. So, um, so they sent me their Wizard C2 Pro multi-purpose flashlight and I guess it can clip onto your belt 
or it's magnetic, or you can clip it, or it's got a handlebar handle, so this is it. So it's got a magnetic charger, and I'm gonna try it, because A, they asked me if I could, and B, I need a headlamp. So let's see. Let's see what this looks like. So got instructions. I don't think we need those. Nope, we've got a uh, charging cord. Oh, and this is, that's different. Um, here's the light all wrapped up. I guess, Ooh, it's a magnetic, magnetic USB plugger inner thingy. Um, yeah, that's in here. Check out the battery. You know, when in doubt, just take things apart. So it's got, oh, it's got a rechargeable uh, lithium ion battery. That's a big battery. So you know what, even though this is a, a big light to hang on your head probably, and I'm just speculating because I haven't put it on my head yet. Um, it's, uh, it's a big light. <laughs> Mark, you got a big light. Well, let's see. I don't know if it's a big light yet, so. Holy cow. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yep, it's a bright light. I'm not gonna shine it in my eyes because I'll probably get, oh my gosh, this is, that's bright. This is kind of neat. I like how it lights up, <laughs> the button. I guess it's, it's a big button, so it should be easy to find, you know, when you're, uh, where's my light, where's my light? So there's the, I don't know why there's an O-ring in there. Okay, so there's an O-ring in there for a reason. I don't know why. Um, it's kind of clipped into there. I wonder if that's like, oh, maybe that's to, oh, that's probably to put around your light so it doesn't fall off. Yeah, loop it. Gosh, I'm a genius and I didn't even read the instructions. So you put, put it in there and then, uh, <laughs> look at that, loop it around and you can clamp it to your bike or, you know, cab over grab handle. Anyways, I don't have a bike. Well, I do have a bike, but it's an old bike. It's a little grippy thing. Um, 3M tape. So I guess, well, that's another rubber rubber grippy thing and a um a clip so you could stick it in like your your pocket or on your belt or whatever so anyways that's that and this is the headband piece so let's give this a go because this is what i need right now because we got to get under we got to get under the deck and put that uh two by four in so <sighs> or make sure it's straight so that's simple enough just clip it in there clip and stretch this over and hook it. There we go. You know what, maybe, maybe I'll take my toque off and adjust this for my svelte noggin. Actually, you know what? That's pretty good. Don't even notice the weight. Then I reach up. <laughs> Turn it. Oh yeah. So far, two thumbs up. It's bright. It's mother, mother beeping bright. Yeah, Army Tech. Hopefully there'll be a link down below where you can get a Peterbilt bike discount for an Army Tech light. So, now that I blinded y'all, yeah, now that I blinded y'all, take another drink of Diet Coke, because you know Warren Buffett drinks Diet Coke and he's a smart guy, so. Ah. Okay, let's go do this. There's my two before. Oh my gosh, that's bright. It's like daylight. Um, yeah, here's my two by four. And you can see it goes, there's a little bit of rust there. Don't mind the rust, don't mind it. 
Um, it's actually sitting pretty good. You know what? I left these these um, half fender mounts on to guide it because, you know, I'm smart like that. And uh, yeah, I just got to move that out down there. Uh, uh, I'll check the back side. Check Kenny's back side. I think I'd like this two by four to go forward more because it's kind of sticking back a bit. And it's got to be moved over. This one's adequate. Yeah, I'm going to call that adequate. Uh, this one is not. I don't think. I don't think it's adequate. So I'm going to tap that one back. Oh, that's why, because the frame is... See, and that's the kicker. The frame is rust jack there, so this is flexing. Which is the whole reason why Kenny's going to get a new rear end. <laughs> Uh, driver's side, driver's side looks good. Uh, if we look up front, see this one's sticking forward and that's what I'd like to have on both sides. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, turn my light off. This light's bright. Put that in. Kind of impressed so far guys. Gets a little warm, but it's bright. Use this for running or <laughs> running. Yeah, somebody could use it for running. I'm not using it for running. So I'm gonna give these a little love tap. See if I can move them. See if I can hit it. See if I can hit a third time. There we go. Yeah. So let's do that. Um wonder if I should hit it. Uh, that's probably good enough because it's going to support it back here too, right? But I at least want it past the the end of the frame. I'll maybe do that on both sides, hit it forward and um, get it lined up. So this is what we're going to clamp Kenny's deck on with. Um, this is a U-bolt kit. Oh, and I got two of these. I didn't need to buy two. Four U-bolts in there. Well, that's good. I can take a step back. Um, yeah, so this is a U-bolt kit for an aluminum cab guard, and that's what we're going to clamp them on with. comes with some rubber pads, which we don't need. Um, uh, got those to go on the frame, top and bottom. Got a shim. I don't think we need those. I don't think we need those either, but those will come in handy. Oh yes, they will. Oh, I guess there's, yeah, there's four. So, there we go. Um, yeah, these, you know what these are for? This is so when you put it over top of the cab guard, you put those there so the, the U-bolt can go over the crown. So, I think I'll, uh, I'll use those as well. And then when you clamp it down, it's going to pull tight. It's going to be tight! So, yeah. One of these in each corner, and uh, we'll clamp it on. Clamp it! Just like the clampets. Remember the clampets? I remember the clampets. There again, a show I watched after school, I believe. So, let's go put these on. So here's what it looks like with the U-bolts. <clears throat> so I put it over top of this channel. I've got the piece of steel up top like that and it fits down here. And when this sucks up, that's gonna be up beside the airbag um, like this. So it'll be by the pedestal. So I don't have to worry about the airbag when it's inflated hitting it. And there's not a lot of clearance on the top of the tires, but but there is. So <clears throat> when these are aired up, and I mean that's worst case scenario if you bottom it out or for whatever reason have the air dumped, dump it. So yeah, I'll just zing these up. And uh, boy, this light is bright, eh? Look at that. Fall over here. So we're looking down there, turn it off, turn it on. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so I'm gonna clamp the back ones up. Then I have to put my coveralls on and crawl underneath. I mean, I probably don't have to put my coveralls on, but I think I probably should crawl underneath and um, do up the ones on the front. So, oh yeah, like butter, butter key. You can see where this frame has been glued back together. <sighs> okay, put our, our base plate on, put our nylock nuts on. that's taut. When I say taut, I mean tight. There. Now I just have to spin around and do this one. <laughs> Famous last words. Oh, and I found my leak. There's a little bit of play in this front pinion seal. Woo! There's an oil filter here too that I should change. But, uh, anyways, anyways, good enough for now. There we go. <laughs> Why did I have more room on the other side? That's what I want to know. That'll work. Or that should have gone on the inside. <sighs> eh, it'll be fine. It's fine. There. Ah, oh, good enough. This guy's got a hydraulic reservoir for the jack. To give it more fluid, and I just took that off. So now I want to see if I can bring it around. I don't know if I could, but this way. Unless I put it up there. No, sorry, no. Well, I got her mounted. Um, but I was short of fitting. I was able to make it work for now, but I do need to get another little 90 like that so the lines can go nice. <clears throat> can still get up my fuel cap. And this truck has a reservoir, which is up there. You can see it? So with the reservoir, it's always got a full supply of uh, hydraulic fluid for your cab jack, which is great because you never have to worry about it running low but uh, the line is not long enough, <sighs> so I need to get a bigger line. But um, <sighs> yeah, so there you have it. I got the deck on, and Kenny's looking fine. And look at that. I think that looks good. What do you think, guys? You know what? Until I can stretch him out, I, I kind of really like them this short and we'll, we'll see how this deck goes. I mean, you know what? It's, it's very utilitarian. So kind of like a pickup. You know how when you're a kid, you're like, oh, it'd be cool to have a big truck pickup. Well, that's a big truck pickup. You know, maybe a little overkill with, uh, you know, eight wheels and tires on the back, but uh, I could single them out, you know, single them out and, and then you wouldn't notice, but um, uh, yeah. Anyways, guys, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, really appreciate it. If you'd like to get a beanie or a toque, hit up uh, shoppeterbeltmike.com and uh, there's key tags there and I'm gonna have a lot more 
Real cool merch coming, but uh, slow and steady wins a race. We're gonna start out slow and uh, figure it out as we go along. But uh, yeah, just wanna thank you guys for watching and we'll catch you next time. Cheers.